22 things that I learned in 2022. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so very glad that you clicked on this video today to join me in bringing you some amazing content. So as you can see by the title, we are going to be discussing the 22 things that I learned in 2022. Obviously, yes, I've learned more than 22 things, but for the sake of the video, we're going to say 22 things that I learned in the year of 2022. And just a little bit of background, I guess, on some of these things is that obviously 2022 was a challenging year for many of us. For me especially, I feel like 2022 was one of the hardest years of my life. Um, I have several of those, but I definitely feel like 2022 was one of the ones that was up there for me. But what I can say about this year, although there are things that I learned about myself and there are things that I realized and different things, I can say that I'm very thankful for the year of 2022 because I feel like without this year, without having it, I wouldn't be alive. You know what I mean? I have to thank God for this year, thank him for giving me another year of life to turn 26 this year. I started a book YouTube this year. I graduated college this year. Like, <clears throat> I went on an international abroad trip to Oslo, Norway this year. I traveled a whole bunch for work this year. I mean, so much has happened, so much good has happened. So what I can say is I'm thankful for this year. I'm thankful for another year of life, although this year was very challenging. And, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just really excited to bring this video to you guys and let me know down in the comments below what are some of the things you learned in 2022. I would love to talk about it and to figure out what some of you guys experienced this year. But yeah, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit your notification bell so you can be notified every single time I post a video. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel. It helps me out so very much and share this with your family or friends. Just let them know that there's a girl out there named Olivia who's giving us some amazing amazing content and I want to share it with you. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the 22 things that I learned in 2022. All right, so on my iPad right here, oops, I have the 22 things that I learned in 2022. Obviously, yes, like I said before, I learned a lot more things in the year of 2022, but these are just some of the ones that I thought of kind of off the top of my head. But the very first thing, and I apologize for the sniffly stuffy <clears throat> type of sounds. I am a little bit under the weather. Um, hopefully it passes because I feel like the holidays are like literally right around the corner and it would suck to like be sick for Christmas and whatnot. But I mean, you know, we can't really pick and choose <laughs> when we don't feel well. But yeah, so I apologize for that. But the first thing that I realized in 2022 is that I'm introverted. I am extremely introverted. Um, I don't know if it shows, but I am. And I think my whole life, I thought I was an extroverted person because I'm spontaneous, I'm bubbly, I can be a little oblivious. I am outgoing in the sense of I don't mind trying new things and learning something new and diving into something I've never experienced to like master it. You know, I like to push myself and you know, reach my highest potential. And I think I took all of that and put it in the box of extroverted when really in reality, I'm a really introverted person. And I like being alone, but I don't like being alone, if that makes any sense. I enjoy my space. I love living alone. There are times when it's like, oh, maybe if I brought my cat from my mom's house, you know what I mean? Like those little things. But all in all, I really enjoy this alone time that I have and I realize how I'm a homebody or not necessarily a homebody, but I'm a person who likes doing things by myself, like going out to the bookstore, going shopping, you know, um, going on walks, you know what I mean? Taking little drives, like I enjoy that stuff. And I think my whole life I was escaping that introverted side of me because I was around so many extroverted people. But yeah, I'm introverted. Let me know down in the comments if any of you guys are introverted or extroverted and when did you realize that? The second thing I learned in 2022 is obviously, I love books and I love reading. I do not know why it took me so long to get into reading. Oh my gosh, if I could go to my younger self and like shake her awake, Olivia, read books. I mean, honestly, books are amazing. It 
It's a way of, to escape. It's a way to experience new things, new cultures. It's a way to dive into a realm that doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Like fantasy, for example, paranormal. But I love reading. And then on top of that, like I never knew how important reading is. Like it, first of all, broadens your vocabulary. It teaches you new things. Then you also get to experience those childhood imagination moments that you would have as a kid when you're reading because when you grow up you kind of lose that so I can say that the second thing I learned was definitely that I love reading and I'm so glad that I took that push in 2021 it was like that's gonna be my new year's resolution because I'm so very happy and I cannot wait to see how many books I'm gonna read in 2022 I mean 2023 and just all that's in store. I'm just so excited for all the words that are just gonna be like going up in there in the brain, like it's exciting. The third thing that I learned in 2022 is not only do I love to read, but I love fantasy, middle grade, historical fiction and thrillers and a little bit of romance. Um, but yeah, I can say I've been on a middle grade kick for a while now for the last few weeks and I'm loving it, but I definitely wanna dive into more of fantasy and YA and adult novels coming into the year of 2023 as well as continuing those middle grade novels but I think I have so much on my shelves behind me and a lot of these aren't even read yet um and I'm a little bit ashamed about it because I want to go buy more books but no honestly though I need to get these down and majority of these are YA or adult books and then like a handful of them are middle grade so I definitely need to work through these the fourth thing that I learned in 2022 is that for as long as I can remember, I've never been my truest self with others. Obviously figuring out that I'm extroverted and that now when I think back, you know, to my younger self, 10, 11, 12, I was a people pleaser. I can still say I kind of am and I really want to work on that, but I love seeing people happy and if something I do, or if I act a certain way makes another person happy, then that's what I'm gonna do. And I find that now being 26 years old, that has affected me so much because I'm finally, as you can see, like honestly I can say even with this book YouTube, I would have never done this. Um, I would have never done this. I would have never branched out and did something to show my truest, bubbly, oblivious, happy, excited, book loving, you know, talkative, fast paced talking self. I would have never done that because I've always been told that, you know, it's annoying or, you know, you're too, too loud or, you know, you're too intense or always like when I laugh about something or like I have a, like an outburst because something was funny, like, oh my gosh, quiet that down. You know, so I've never been my truest self. I've always been kind of pulled back and reserved and I'm so thankful for this channel that I created here in my Instagram because I can be my true self and I'm learning how to do that with people in my life as well. And it's actually something that my mom and my aunt and several people in my life have told me. And it's like, I'm glad that now they can see, wow, Olivia's really being Olivia. She's not hiding behind, you know, self-consciousness or, you know, being afraid what people are going to think or trying to please people, but she's being her truest self and she's happy and she's reading her books and she's living in her apartment. She's an amazing plant mom with like a thousand plant babies. She is just living her life and she's happy. She's not hiding behind like a wall trying to keep people from, you know, just trying to please people. She's, I'm really being myself. So that's one thing I've learned. Then the fifth thing that I learned this year is that I'm officially a crazy plant lady. I know I should have realized this before, but I think I realize I'm a crazy plant lady now because I have no room to put more plants. And I think when you get to the point of like, you have no more room to put more plants because you want to situate them in front of the light so that they survive, then you are a crazy plant lady. But yeah, I literally don't have any more room. Like literally everything in my apartment is fooled with plants in a spot that gives it light. Yeah, I can definitely say I, I learned. I'm a crazy plant lady. <laughs> um, number six, I love running. So I did my first 5K in October of this year and it was super amazing. I was in the top 10 of the girls in my age group. So I think I was in ninth place and I love it, I enjoy it. I cannot wait until it's warm again because in the winter it's really hard for me to run. I don't enjoy it. I prefer running when it's hot and it's sunny. You know what I mean? There's like more happening. Um, but yeah, and I don't like treadmill running. 
But um, yeah, I'm really excited to get back into that in the spring to hopefully do another 5K and then possibly a 10K. I'm super excited about that, but I love running. It's so freeing for me. It's really exciting to see my progress and how far you get after you do it. You know, it's slow. It's not something that's quick, but like since, you know, when I started doing running in 2019 until now, like it's a huge jump. Like I'm much faster. My heart rate is down. Like, you know, my pace is quicker. So yeah, I love running. Number seven. And that was mental health is very important. And that's why I can say 2022 was hard because I think when you are a people pleaser and when you want people to be happy and you don't want to be a burden on people and you want to, I guess in a way, kind of look like you have everything together, which is not the right way to have it. But me being the eldest in my family, my mom being a single mom, I grew up really fast. And I grew up as a person who I can do it, I can handle it, I'll get it done, whatever it needs to be. I never got help for homework, didn't need it. I figured it out. I never needed mom to like help me with this because I figured out that's how my mind went because I had three younger siblings. My mom was a single mom, it wasn't easy. I need to get it together. And now as an adult, I think having those patterns and no, I wasn't, you know, um, conditioned to be that way I could have asked my mom for anything she would have come with the drop of a hat I just think as being the eldest and let me know if any of you down below have those similar tendencies but like as being the oldest kid you feel this responsibility to figure it out and do it so your mom doesn't have to do it for you and so I sense that now that has caused it to where if I'm going through something and I want to talk about it, I feel bad about it. Like, it's not important. Figure it out, get it together, get it done. And I think that has suppressed a lot of things. And I think I realized this year, and it's so much better now, but that, yes, maybe you're the oldest. And yes, you have a little bit more responsibility. Yes, maybe you want to be the person who can do it so that your mom or whoever in your life doesn't have to worry about it. They're still going to worry. And it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to talk about it. It's okay to get help. And not to look at it as a weakness or you're causing someone to have burden. You know, you're, it's, that's not how it is. They care. They want to know. You have to talk about it. And I think I'm learning slowly but surely that, like, if I'm going through something, it's okay to go to my mom and lay it all out. You know what I mean? She's not looking at it like, oh, my gosh, here comes Olivia with another burden or whoever you're speaking to. They're looking at it as she trusts me and she wants to tell me. So that's definitely something I learned that mental health is very, very important. All right, number eight, I love baking and experimenting with gluten-free recipes. So my sister, Alea, she is my brother and then Alea and then Alyssa. So the third child, she is gluten-free. She has uh, celiac or Crohn's? Colitis. She has colitis and like she will die if she eats gluten. And so we, through Thanksgiving and holidays and birthdays, and when we go out to restaurants, we always try to find things that will have gluten-free options. But baked goods are really hard because at the store, they're dry, crumbly, or super expensive, and they're not like fresh. So I really have been trying to experiment with gluten-free cookie dough and like different type of gluten-free add-ins that you can add in. Like I made a car caramel apple, I made pumpkin before of chocolate chip, and I really wanna perfect that more when I have a little bit more time, I've been so busy, but to dive into gluten-free baking and regular baking, but definitely gluten-free so that she can have cookies and cupcakes and, and bread and different things that's not store-bought and dry. Number nine, human adult reasoning is what causes so much struggle. And when I go back to the first thing about I love reading and why I love, for example, like middle grade, it's because children have such an imagination that even if they're reading a book that's about, you know, gargoyles and like imps and like elves and stuff like that they're like oh my gosh this is the best thing they dive into it you know they almost become best friends with the main character like they are so enthralled and even younger children playing with like their toys and they could play for hours and I remember being younger with that imagination but as you get older human reasoning becomes a factor and logic and you know it's not realistic and everything and then you lose sight of that and I definitely want to be someone who who embraces my imagination and reading and diving into that part where you can get so imaginative is when you're reading a book because human reasoning and adult human reasoning is what causes so much struggle. And um, I don't wanna be a person who has this, you know, high and mighty thought and this, you know, I have it all together and I know because of my experiences and then I disregard, you know, something around me because of that when instead like, 
having an imagination. And I think of like um, the verse that I, that's in the Bible that says, if you can have faith, if you don't have faith like a little child, you will not be able to enter the kingdom of God. I believe that's how it is, but I'll put it on the screen. And it makes me think of that. Like I need childlike faith. I need that childlike imagination and trust and belief in things and human adult reasoning hinders that so, so much. I learned this year is that I'm not the biggest fan of traveling. I think I have maybe a wee bit of social anxiety like at the airport because it's so many people and that's something I need to work on but I just don't like traveling because I get off my schedule, I get off my routine, I need a schedule, I need a routine, my stomach always gets destroyed, I suffer severely with IBS and it gets ruined every single time I get in an airplane. I don't know if it's the altitude, I don't know if it's the nerves but it's ruined the entire time I'm out of town. I'm always sick when I get back. I just, I don't really like it, but it's fun. Obviously you get to go to nice places. Like I recently was in Arizona and Las Vegas. So you get to go do things. I was in Oslo, Norway. I went to Florida this year. I went to New York City. Like um, I went to California this year, like a lot of different things, but it's like, I don't know. You know what I mean? I think I like it, but at the same time, it's like, I don't really like it. Number 11, I don't pray as much as I should. And that was a really tough realization for me because I think as Christians, you want to feel like you have it all together and you're a really good Christian and you pray and you love Jesus. But when it comes down to it and God opens your eyes and you get to acknowledge yourself, you can see how superficial you are and how actually fake it is and how it's for a show and for people. And that humbled me tremendously. And I need to be a person who is down on my knees and asking God for help and seeking him in everything big or small. And not trying to do it in my own strength and that's how it's going to be for me going forward and that's how it's going to be for me in 2022 and every other year that God has given me to live on this earth and that's how I'm going to take it that I'm going to pray I'm going to speak to my maker he is my friend he is my father he is someone that I'm supposed to to talk to and tell things to and get information and, and direction in everything in my life so if I don't pray how in the world am I gonna get it you know so yeah that's definitely something I learned in 2022 all right and then number 12 I am enough even though it doesn't feel like it and I think for a long time I can definitely say right before 2022 so like maybe October of 2021, I was really discouraged and depressed and really suffering a lot. And being attacked by the enemy and sense of like, you're not good enough, you're past, look at you, you know, you're not worthy, you're not as, as important as all of these different people or whatever. And this year I learned, I was reading a devotional and it said, even though you feel like it, don't let it control you. And that stood out to me. And that goes with everything. Even though I might feel ugly, I might feel insignificant, I'm feeling sad, I'm feeling irritated, I'm feeling hopeless, I'm feeling depressed. Even though I feel it and my feeling is valid and it's the truth, I'm not gonna let it dictate my actions. I'm not gonna let it dictate what I am doing. I'm not gonna let it control me. I'm gonna say, yes, this is how it is, but I'm not gonna sit in that and I'm gonna do something like this and yes it's easier said than done and I think it's different for each and every person but I have faith in God in that way that even though I might feel this way and I don't feel like I'm enough his word says that I am therefore I believe his word it is a hundred percent true so that means I have worth although I don't feel it and if I believe it and I pray and ask for help God is gonna help me and I'm gonna then have that as my truth too and my feeling but yeah I learned that in 2022 then number 13, I should have went to school for English or creative writing. I mean, yeah, that would have been amazing. Obviously, that's a prayer matter that I need to, you know, if God would have had it that way, it would have gone that way. But yeah, I would have loved to go to school for creative writing. I mean, the fact that I love reading right now, I'm actually working on my own book, which who'll know whenever that'll be done. But yeah, I... I do really wish I would have went to school for that or at least minored in it or took some more like elective classes in it um, because I love it. And I think I love how imaginative and how expressive people can get with their words and how they can really make you, you know, feel like you're there with the character. I really enjoy that. Um, yeah. Then number 14, I do too much. That's the truth. And like I was saying with my routine and with traveling, I'm a person who goes, goes, goes. Literally ask my mom, ask anyone in my life, and I crash and burn. I went from A, 
all the way to Z. I forgot A, B, C, you know, B, C, D, E, F, G, like all of those other letters. And I do that so much and I crash and burn and I know it's a really bad thing to do, but I feel like when you're spontaneous and when you're just like a go, go kind of like, if I put my mind to it, I'm gonna do it. You tend to do that. So that's definitely something I need to work on to not like do everything at once take it one day at a time and it's easier said than done because I can't relax and feel comfortable when everything's like not in order you know so yeah I learned this year I do way too much number 15 I love coffee I really love coffee and as you can see in some of my other videos I have a little coffee station you know with like flavors and syrups and all of that but I literally love coffee I love Starbucks I always go to Starbucks and I'm definitely the girl with like a 10 foot you know order because I need to make sure everything is correct in there all the amount of syrups and milks and creams and all of that but yeah I love coffee number 16 prayer walks are life-changing I learned this from the Honey Scoop, Ashley Harrington, I believe. I'll post her name up here, her like Instagram picture. But she says that she would go on prayer walks. So obviously like you pray, you know, in the morning or whatnot, but then during your day, like or things you're going through, go outside and take a walk. First of all, you're getting your steps in. That's really amazing. Get a little workout in, but then you're in prayer walk. And literally I go on walks and I just talk to God. I might put in my AirPods, might listen to him something. I might not, but I just talk to him. I express things to him. I let him know how things are going, what I'm going through, like how the verse says to meditate on his word day and night. So yes, in the morning I wake up, I pray. Before I go to bed, I pray. Throughout the day, I'm doing things, but like meditating on him, talking with him all the time when it comes to me. He's my father. He's my best friend. I can tell him anything, anytime, whenever I want. So you have to definitely say I would encourage you that to take walks first of all they're amazing for your health and your heart but to have a prayer walk and just talk it out on a walk it doesn't matter if anyone's looking at you thinking you look crazy have those prayer walks they are amazing all right so then we have number 17 it's okay to not have friends I'll repeat it it's okay if you do not have friends I have you know, people who I go to church with who are in like my youth group and like whatnot. But as of being a person who like has a best friend, and to be honest, I've never had a best friend. Like truth, I've never experienced ride or die best friend. I remember being younger, having sleepovers. You know what I mean? Like hanging out with someone maybe when you went and did something. But as of having like a best friend who's been consistent all my, you know, you know, childhood all the way up to my adult years no and that has been the hardest pill to swallow i mean tears have been shed you know feelings hurt just so much but i actually don't and what i can say is that that is why i'm so glad that i started this book youtube and book instagram because although i am not with you guys and you're not with me to have you watch this content and like this content, comment on this content. It is so incredibly just, it makes me feel very good because then at least I know I have a whole bunch of people all over the world who love books just like me and we can talk about them and we can get happy about them and we can enjoy book hauls and book reviews. And yeah, so even though I don't have friends, I'm really thankful that I did this. I'm really thankful that I stepped out of the comfort zone and did it. But yeah, it's okay to not have friends. This is number 18, I thrive with routines. Yes, I think I mentioned that not just a minute ago in terms of traveling. I thrive with routines, with a morning routine, a nighttime routine, my routine while I'm at work, my routine on the weekends is different than my routine during the week. I think having structure in terms of like, like for example, like I have a meal planning routine, like I shop on Saturday, I meal plan on, on Sunday. Like just keeping your routine keeps you in line and it allows you to get as many things done as you want to get done in the day. And then also shows you what you didn't accomplish that you can tack onto the next day. So making like to-do lists and, and having like a, a journal or a planner, I really love that, I thrive with those and when I get off of them it's so challenging but I always love when I can get back onto it all right number 19 I wish I started reading as a kid and I mentioned that with the second thing of I love books I love reading but yeah I wish I would have started as a kid I feel like there's so many like experiences that I missed out on you know so many characters but obviously yes books are still around and I 
can pick up as many of them as I want and read them, but it would have been so nice to have like, you know, thousands of books, hundreds of books underneath my belt at this point. If I ever become a mother, which I hope I do, if I ever become a mother, it's gonna be a reading household. Those kids are gonna love reading. We are gonna read all the time. We are gonna be reading books. We're gonna be talking about books, going to Barnes and Noble. I mean, we're gonna be having just like summer reading challenges. Like I'm gonna have a boatload, maybe not a boatload, but I'm gonna have me a nice group, a nice, a nice amount of little bookworms. Um, so yeah, I am excited about that. Um, number 20. I don't always say the kindest things to myself. And I think we can all agree to that. It's easy when you like do something, you're like, you know, that was so stupid. Like, why would you ever do that? It's so dumb. And I was talking to my aunt about that and she encouraged me that that is so negative. And obviously I know it, but I think when you hear someone tell you, you really realize it is really not good. But yeah, say kind things to yourself. Like the saying says, how can you expect anyone to love you if you don't love yourself? That is so true. You have to be kind to yourself. You have to be nice to yourself. You have to say nice things to yourself. You can't be mean to yourself because then you're gonna start learning and start believing that is true. And we think of people who are verbally abusive and you hear about that, like someone is verbally abusive to another person and affects them. But you can also be very verbally abusive to yourself. So I wanna encourage you to say kind things to yourself and you know it's not easy. But if you have to start every morning in your mirror, be like, I'm enough, I'm worthy, today's going to be a good day, I'm strong, I am beautiful, I'm smart, then start with that. Even if you don't feel it, like I was saying before, you may not feel it, but it's true, and eventually you're going to believe it. But yeah, say very nice things to yourself. Number 21, I love salads. And this isn't like, I want to be healthy, like salads are low carb, like keto, no. I love salads salads okay you can have anything on a salad you can have a fruit salad you can have a lettuce salad you can have a kale salad you can have a spinach salad you can have a pasta salad i love salads i like taking a base whether that's pasta rice um fruit or whatever and piling it in with stuff for example you can have a goat cheese beet and chicken salad you can have a Caesar salad, you can have a Cobb salad, you can have an Asian crispy sesame salad, you can have you a pesto chicken tomato basil salad. Like you can literally have a, one of my favorite salads, like a hummus and chickpea avocado chicken salad. Like you can do anything with a salad. You can load it with protein, it's loaded with good carbs, it's loaded with good fats, it's delicious, it keeps you full, you have energy, they're easy to prep, chop a whole bunch of vegetables up, get your protein, get all your dressings, get all your little toppings, there you go. Like salad, taco salad. Come on, y'all. Like pasta salad, potato salad, macaroni salad. Like, oh my gosh, I love salad. Number 22, the grand finale, I guess. Everyone's reading reasons and preferences and styles and paces are different and that's okay. I can tell you I was reading a series and I mentioned something about it and it was shot down and I was so tempted to feel really bad about that. But then I thought, no, everyone's reading styles, preferences, paces, genres, feelings are all different. Some of us read to escape, some of us read for knowledge, some of us only like nonfiction, some like fiction, some hate fantasy, some only love romance. Everything is different and that's okay. Some of us read really slow. Some of us can read a book a day, a couple books a day. Some of us are, you know, speed readers, you know what I mean? Um, I am not. Um, but everyone's reading style and whatnot is different and that's okay. And if you have not already, I will put my handle on the screen, but go check out my book Instagram. There, I recently posted a post, which I'll post on the screen up here, talking about your different reading styles and while you read. And it can be hard kind of when you like a book and someone reviews it really bad. That's okay. You still like the book. The book is still good to you, even though they didn't. Or you feel like the author isn't doing as well Well, someone thinks like this author is still writing great work. That's okay. You can think that, but they don't. You know what I mean? So just don't let that affect you. Don't let that take you out of like your joy of reading because of a book or someone's comment or their opinion. Everyone has, you know, 
an opportunity to have their own opinion and everyone's opinion in their own right is valid. So therefore, if you like the book, the book is great. <laughs> but yeah, that is going to conclude the 22 things that Olivia learned in 2022. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a comment down below of any of the things you learned in 2022. If you like salads, let me know that. What's your favorite genre of reading? Let me know that. And yeah, we can discuss it down there in the comments. But yes, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Please do not forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit your notification bell so you can be notified every single time I post a video. And subscribe to the YouTube channel and join this fam. We are so fun and we have so much fun together. And yeah, I'm so glad that you guys are here. I'm so glad that you guys have joined. And I will catch you in my very next video. Bye, friends.